What's up, everybody? This is Neil Real, and this is Let's Please God, the ministry that helps you get right with God. Today, we're on episode 69, and we're talking about keeping the law. We're in a series called Israel, where we talked about who true Israel is. We believe that the black man in America and dispersed across the planet are the biblical descendants of the Israelites. And so we're, we're continuing our talk about that. We revealed that in Deuteronomy 28, that God placed some curses on Israel for not obeying him. He created some, some rules and said, if, if you obey me, I'll bless you. And if you don't obey me, keep my commandments, I'm going to curse you. And so the scripture continues on to tell us that these curses will show as a sign to you or to signify that you are my people. And so that's how we identify ourselves as the biblical Israelites or the descendants of the biblical Israelites because of the signs on us, the curses on us. And so we've been talking about this in, in, in this series. And today we're going to talk about how to actually come out of the curses. And we mentioned to it, we mentioned it prior, but I want to deal with what a lot of the Hebrew camps will tell you. And the first thing they're going to say is, well, you need to keep the law. So Deuteronomy 28, 15 says, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these things or these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And so the rest of the chapter shows you all the curses. All right. So it seems to be that in order to reverse the curses, to get out from under the quote unquote white man, to be free from these ills that we are facing, we just need to keep the commandments. I mean, the scripture says it right here. So it seems like that's the right thing you do. That's what you're supposed to do. So what are the commandments? Well, the commandments are the 10 commandments that we, we know that was given to Moses in the wilderness on Mount Sinai, I believe. And then there's about 613 laws that govern Israel, dietary laws, sacrifice laws, health laws, etc. And so he's basically saying that, you know, you need to follow all these in order to please God and, and to be free from the curses. And we know that Israel did that often. They did that. They followed God and then they were blessed and then they would end up in sin and God will curse them and they end up in captivity. Then they cry out Then God brings them out of captivity and then they're free for a while. And then they start sinning again and, and practicing uh, idol worship and all this other stuff. And they end up in uh, captivity again as a punishment and so forth and so forth. And so now we are in, I think, our seventh captivity, which is the longest one we've seen. So that's what happened. Now, first of all, I just want to say a few things because a lot of Hebrew camps accuse me of not respecting the law of God. They say that I'm one of these teachers who say that, that the law is done away with and all that stuff. I don't believe none of that and I don't teach that. I never taught that. All right. The law is good. That's, that's in Romans chapter 7, verses 12. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. That's found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17. I know the scriptures. So what that means is Christ came to not destroy the old religious system, but to build upon it. He came to finish the old covenant and establish the new. That's what that means. And so what I'll be talking about today is the, the continuation and the building upon the old law and the test, the old testament and the old covenant, and, and and give you a full understanding of what God requires of you today in order to please Him. Because if you just try to keep the law in your flesh, you're gonna fail. We're gonna show you that. We're gonna show you a better way. We're gonna show you how to please God today. So, I hope the Hebrew camps are listening, and even some of those Hebrew movement people are listening, and anybody else who thinks that just keeping the law is gonna please God. Is not. All right. In Romans chapter 13, verses 80 says, Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So now they're showing you something. Jesus already came to fulfill the law. And now he's saying that if you love one another, you fulfill the law. Okay. 
First John chapter four, verse eight says, he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love. So now he's saying love is God and God is love. And first Corinthians chapter 13, verses four through seven gives you a overview of what love is. It talks about love being kind, patient, long suffering, honest, humble, et cetera, et cetera. And then another scripture here is found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23, and it lists the fruits of the Spirit. And one of the fruit of the Spirit is love. So given the whole counsel of God, not just the Old Testament, but the New Testament, in order to keep the law, we must have the Spirit of God. S seeing as the Holy Spirit didn't dwell in men until after Pentecost, we see how Israel kept failing God and failing to keep his commandments. So the reason why we're in this condition now is because we did not have the Holy Spirit to empower us to please God. And I'm going to show you all of this in scripture, but I'm just giving you an overview of what I'm going to talk about. The Holy Spirit is what you need today in order to please God. And if you are walking in the spirit, you'll automatically be keeping the law. So today we'll be answering five questions. So number one, why was the law given? Number two, what happens when you focus on keeping the law? Number three, why didn't God give the spirit to Israel long ago so that they could please him? Because that makes a lot of sense. I mean, they kept failing God. We'll just give them the Holy Spirit to empower them to do it. Why didn't he do that? Number four, how do we please God today if not through the law? We already know through the spirit, but we'll talk about that in depth. And how do we walk in the spirit? So we'll be answering all those questions today. So let's get right into scripture and answer the first question. Why was the law given? Well, we find the answer in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. It says, we know that the law is good. And I agree. For all you black Hebrew Israelite camps out there who saying, I don't respect the law. I agree with what Paul is saying here. All right. We know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for a lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So the law is given for the wicked person. In other words, God created a standard and said, don't do what y'all doing. And that was given to Israel. Israel was practicing the law. And that standard was also given to the rest of the world as well. Even though they may not have had the laws in their hands, God still held them to that standard after the fact of giving those laws. So what is it for? And think about it this way. I hope this is the best example, but it keeps coming to mind. Say some. there's a speed limit. The reason why there's a speed limit, because some people, if there is no limit, they'll just drive any old kind of way in any kind of uh, neighborhood and potentially hurt people. Like in most residential neighborhoods, the speed limit is 25. Why? Because you're right next to houses. There could be children playing in the front yard. There could be people backing out of their driveways. You can't be speeding through there doing 45, 55 miles an hour. So there has to be a speed limit there. But the thing about the wicked man is that he needs that because he does not have love in his heart to understand that there's children around, that there's people that could potentially be harmed by him speeding. Okay, he's self-centered. He's selfish. He just want to get through there. He don't care about his surroundings. The man in the spirit cares about his surroundings. It would naturally slow down. You see, but we live in a world full of sinners, so there's always going to be rules in place. It's going to be st stop signs. It's going to be all kind of stuff. But when you're in the spirit, you automatically do the right thing. You know to do the right thing. And so that's why he says that the law was given to the wicked. The wicked person does the wrong thing. They need to be told you wrong. Don't do that. So when you as a Hebrew Israelite say, I'm going up under the law again, or you part of the Hebrew roots movement, you're basically saying I'm a wicked person that needs to be told what to do. Now me as a man born in the spirit, I don't get into that. I'm already doing the right thing because I'm led by the spirit. You see, the wicked man doesn't, isn't, isn't led by the spirit. So he has to be have restrictions on him. He has to have a wall up 
He has to have signs telling him, don't do this, don't do that. He has to have a law that says, don't lie. Me as a man born in the spirit, I naturally don't lie. I don't practice lying. Lying is something contrary to my nature because I've been born again. I don't tell lies. I'm more likely going to tell the truth than a lie. If I do, I'm in the flesh for that. But for the most part, that's not in my nature. I tell the truth. Honesty is what I love. I hate lies and deception. But um, this is the breakdown of this scripture to understand what's going on. We're going to keep on going. He mentions a bunch of stuff, whoremongers, liars, men stealers, perjured persons, etc., etc. You know, that's what the law is for. God had to create a law and say, look, this is wrong. Here's what's wrong and here's what's right. And we look at the Ten Commandments, there's a bunch of thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not uh, commit murder. Thou shalt not. It, why all this? Why? Because it's in your heart and that's what you're going to do naturally. You a wicked person. God is telling the Israelites back then and the rest of the world, y'all wicked. All right. Here's another passage. Romans chapter seven, verses seven. It says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So he's saying here that the law was given to show the wicked what sin was. And see, he said, I wouldn't have known what lust was if I wasn't told thou shalt not covet. You see, so God is giving the standards to y'all. He's saying, look, this is what's wrong. This is what's right. He had to verbally put it out there, put it on some tablets and show people. That's what the law was created for. And I, I guess a lot of people can understand that. But then you don't follow along in scripture to, to, to see why you shouldn't be following that. But let's continue on. Here's some more passages. Galatians chapter three, verses 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Let me read that from another translation because that can sound weird from the King James version, but I'm gonna read it from the New Living Translation. Galatians chapter three, verses 19. This is in the New Living Translation. It says, why then was the law given? It was given alongside the promise to show people their sins. But the law was designed to last only until the coming of the child who was promised. We know that's the son of God, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. God gave his law through angels to Moses, who was the mediator between God and the people. All right. So what was the law given for? To show people their sins. Here's the standard of God. You don't measure up. You're a sinner. That's what the law is given for. It says it was given alongside the promise to show people their sins, but the law was designed to last only until the coming of the child who was promised. So the law had a timestamp. It was designed only to last until the coming of the child who was promised. So we know Jesus already then came. He died, rose again and left his Holy Spirit. So why are you still trying to keep the law? We're going to keep on going. So we see that the law was given to show people their sins and that the law was temporary. So here's what happens when you focus on keeping the law. This is found in Romans chapter seven, verses five through six. I'm going to just read from the New Living Translation because it's a lot clearer. When we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us. And the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law. For we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. Let's just start with the first part of, that, of those passages. The law aroused evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. So that's all the law do. Now, is the law sinful? We just read a passage earlier. No, it's not. We need the law to show us that we're sinful. But what it does is just arouses the evil desires in us already. This is, you can see this with a child. Tell a child, you got two doors. Don't open the first door. Don't ever go into that first door. Watch how that child, while you gone, he go into that first door. Why? You just aroused his, his, his evil desire to rebel. 
So you tell a kid, don't do something. This particular door is, is forbidden for you to go into. Watch how they go into that door. The law was designed to show you that you don't measure up to God's standards. So we see that here that the result of the law is that it arouses sin. Why? Because that's what it was designed to do, to show us how wicked we are. Paul continues on in the same chapter of 7, verses 7, it says, Well then, am I suggesting that the law of God is sinful? Of course not. In fact, it was the law that showed me my sin. I would never have known that coveting is wrong if the law had not said, You must not covet. But sin used this command to arouse all kinds of covetous desires within me. If there were no law, sin would not have that power. So God is showing you, I'm going to show you how messed up you are. Here's a law that says don't do that. Now I'm going to show you what's going to come all out of your heart. That's what the law is doing to you, man. And this is why I have a problem with the Hebrew Israelite groups, these camps and the Hebrew Roots movement, because all you're doing is arousing the passions of sin in your heart. So they weren't around talking about, keep that law, keep the law. We keep the law. I keep the law. I keep the law. First of all, you're not keeping the law. All you're doing is failing at the law and you're covering it up. Most of them cats are covering it up. And you can tell by just how they act, operate on the street. You can tell by listening to them when they teach. They're very arrogant. They're not keeping the law. One of the attributes of love is humility. Love is not proud. When you break that down, you'll see that love is humble. So why is it that you're so arrogant? Because you're not walking in the, the, the spirit of God. You're walking under the law, which it's, all it's doing is inciting your passions of, of wickedness in your heart. That's all it's doing. And for all these guys who say they're keeping the law, you're not keeping the law. The Bible says if you offend in one area of the law, you just transgress the entire law. That's found in James chapter 2, verses 10 through 11, by the way. So th that's what's up with that, okay? That's what's going on, and that's what I have a problem with. All y'all doing is, is sinning. You're sinning. Talking about I'm keeping the law. You focus on the law, and you are sinning, okay? You are committing sin. All you're doing, that's what the law do. That's what it does. When you focus on keeping the law, when you pull out the Ten Commandments, when you try to practice some of the 613 laws, some of the dietary laws, some different like that, you end up failing because all it does is going to incite the sin inside of you. You need to be born again and you need the Holy Spirit's power to please God. And then you'll find that you keep the law. You do everything that God says. You please him because you're walking in the spirit and you're walking in faith. I'm going to continue on reading here in verse 9. At one time I lived without understanding the law, but when I learned the command not to covet, for instance, the power of sin came to life and I died. So I discovered that the law's commands, which were supposed to bring life, brought spiritual death instead. Sin took advantage of these commands and deceived me. It used the commands to kill me. But still, the law itself is holy and its commands are holy and right and good and that's where i agree with so y'all want to say i don't agree with you know the law being good and all that i do thou shalt not lie is a good law thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife is a good law thou shalt keep the sabbath holy is a good law thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and love your lord your god is a good law these are good laws i ain't against none of that that's what governs a perfect society if everybody followed that, we wouldn't have no problems. So we're not trying to do away with the law. We're not trying to get rid of the commandments of God. We're saying that God is built on those, a way for you to actually please him and do his will. You can't just do it by just reading those and trying to do that in your flesh. You are not going to succeed that way. Verse 13, it says, but how can that be? Basically saying, but still the law itself is holy and its commands are holy and right and good. But how can that be? Verse 13. Did the law, which is good, cause my death? Of course not. Sin used what was good to bring about my con condemnation to death. So we can see how terrible sin really is. That's what this is all about. That law was designed to show Israel, y'all don't measure up to me. Y'all are a hot mess. It uses God's good commands for its own evil purposes. So the trouble is not with the law. For it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me. For I am too human, a slave to sin. 
I don't really understand myself for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And that's exactly what's happening. But yet you're responsible for what you do in your body. Don't nobody complain. Well, it was the sin in me, man. You're responsible for what your body did. You got sin in your soul, man. That's why you're struggling. But God has a remedy for that. Let me continue reading. Verse 21. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is in my mind. I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. That's what's going on. So the law is arousing this, is showing us you do, don't measure up. So don't, you don't go back under the law. You don't get up under that old system. I want to I want the system that empowers me to please God so that I'm not a failure. You need to be empowered. You need to you need the Holy Spirit indwelling in you to keep you. You see. Back then, they had the spirit on them. You, you know, Samson had the spirit on him, but they didn't stop him from lusting after all them women. So it wasn't that it was just power to do certain things at the time. OK, Moses had the spirit on him. And but you see what happened to him. He ended up not even being able to get into the promised land because of what he did. So the spirit was not given at that time. And let's talk about that by answering this question. Why didn't God give the spirit to Israel long ago? As soon as they came out of it, Egypt, he should have dropped the spirit on them. Look, I know y'all can't please me. So here's the Holy Ghost for y'all. Well, let me break it down to you this way. God had a certain time that when he wanted to bring Jesus on the scene because Jesus had to come and fulfill the law. And then this Holy Spirit had to come after that. They needed a time to see how wicked they were. That's what it was about. He's like, I'm not going to just give the Holy Spirit now. This ain't the best time. He waited until they were in captivity under Rome. He waited until there was a, a person he could use to do this through because not everybody was capable of housing the, the son of God, which was Mary. So he had to wait in time and say, OK, this is the best time. So that's how that that's how that went. For the most part, the law was given, like he said, to show you you wicked. And so thousands of years of blood sacrifices to God to cover up sins. This had to be embedded in the people to understand that they wicked, they foul, they need him. And so then when Jesus comes on the scene and says, you don't even have to do that no more after I die, I'm going to be the ultimate blood sacrifice. I'll now be able to wash away your sins. You won't just have them covered up and still have the guilt. I'll wash away the sin and the guilt and make you right with God. Then I'll pour out my spirit on you and empower you to please me. You won't even be falling like you've been in, in the past. No more of this falling and getting back up, falling and getting back up, falling and getting back up. No, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. So that's why he came like that. And, and, and that's the best explanation I can give right now in a short time frame, just to give you an understanding of why the Holy Spirit wasn't give way, given way back when. So today, how do we please God today? Well, we do it through the Spirit. We've been saying this over and over again. So we see here that what the law does to us, while the law is good, the weakness of man cannot fulfill it. And so all the law does is reveal our sinfulness and our weakness. This is why you shouldn't be trying to focus on keeping the law. So when you see these Israelite camps yelling at you, telling you need to keep the law, you need to go back under the law. They, they, they fooling you. You're going to just go up in the failing. Just like Israel's in this condition today. We're under the curses because we failed to keep the law. And they're going to tell you, just keep the law. You can't do it. How many times are we going to go into captivity? We need something to empower us to actually please God. We don't have it. So God came on the scene and gave it to us through Jesus Christ. First, we got blood sacrifice through Jesus himself that washes away sins. Then we have the Jesus who, who he, his whole life, he is written and recorded. He showed us how to please God. Jesus walked in the spirit. He went up into the mountains. He prayed to God and got the spirit of God to empower him. All those miracles he did through the, the Holy Spirit. He showed us how to live for God. 
Then he died. Is he, he was sacrificed for our sins because he fulfilled the law. He was a righteous man. And that blood was used to cleanse all our sins as we confess them. Then the spirit was brought down to us to empower us to live just like he is. So now you can be just like Christ. Now you can be just like the son of God. You can do everything Jesus was doing. And that's what he said. Greater works you'll do than I did through the Holy Spirit. That's what we lack. In. Nobody's walking in the spirit. And this is applied to these so-called Christian church today. I had that's why I had a problem with them while I left the church 10 years ago. Nobody walking in the spirit. Ain't nobody even born again. First, you got to get born again. Then you got to walk in the spirit because a lot of people are born again, but they weren't taught to walk in the spirit. So they live this failed life where they all the down on themselves about not being able to overcome sin. But the ultimately the Christian church, the mainstream Christian church, I just had a problem with it because nobody's born again. Nobody got regenerated. The new covenant says you must die to your old self and be born again. You must admit that your old self can't please God, that you need a new you need to be a new creation. OK, that you are a child of Satan by default and you need to be dead and then born again in Christ Jesus to be a child of God. And then you're given the Holy Spirit to empower you to please God. That's what's going on. And that's what we're we're about today. But it's few people teaching that. So. Romans chapter three, verses 20 says, for no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. My God, if you just let one of these Hebrew camps read that Hebrew camps, read this Israel united in Christ. Read this. Romans chapter three, verses 20, for no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. Don't listen to these folk talking about go keep the law. You can't do it apart from the Holy Ghost. You can't do it. So here's the remedy. Romans chapter three, verses 21 through 22. We're still out the New Living Translation. It says, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who they are. So whether you Gentile or Israelite, this don't matter. It, 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 if you place your faith in Jesus Christ, this is how you please God. And what does this mean? Just believe in Jesus. I just believe in Jesus. No, it means to believe that Jesus can give you power to overcome sin, that Jesus can empower you to please God, just like he pleased God. OK. And that's through the Holy Spirit. This is what we needed the whole time. And God had to wait through time and, and the best time to actually bring Jesus and then the Holy Spirit for us to be empowered to, to actually please him and to be somebody he, he wants to spend time with. Now, let's go on to Romans chapter eight, verses one through four. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So what I'm saying to people, look, if you just walk in the spirit, you'll fulfill the law. That's what I'm saying. I'm reading. I'm coming from Romans chapter eight. All you got to do is walk in the spirit. The law ain't been abolished. The Ten Commandments ain't been abolished. You just need the Holy Spirit and actually to actually do it. So if you say I'm, I'm a, I want to be a commandment keeper, you want to be a law keeper, walk in the spirit. Now, how do you do that? Now, let me continue before I go into that. We can only keep the law by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the new covenant. It's the grace of God and our faith in God, which saves us. All right. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 10 says, for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So we see here that the grace of God 
has saved us through our faith. It is, this is not of ourselves, though. It's the gift of God. This is the gift of God. All right. The, his grace. OK, but we have to have faith. Of course, we just talked about that earlier. And it's not of our works, lest any man should boast. So ain't nobody getting into heaven talking about they got in because of what they did. Oh, yeah, I just pleased God in my flesh. I kept the commandments. I'm good. No, 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 man. No, no, no. You are only pleasing God through the Holy, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost empowered you and saved you, brought you into heaven. OK, nobody can boast. Nobody can boast. God is showing you, 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 you filthy. You need to be cleaned up and you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to actually please me. So nobody gets the credit when you stand before God and say, you all you can say is thank you, Lord. <laughs> when I stand before God in heaven, all I'm going to be able to say is thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Now, did I have something to do with that? Yeah, well, I, I, I believed that his power would save me from sin. I believe that he could give me the strength to overcome sin. I followed his, his commands when he said to go here and go there. I was obedient, but it was his power in him who saved me. I didn't save myself. I didn't just take up the law and say, oh, I got this. I can't do it. Not apart from the Holy Ghost. And that's the problem with these camps. That's the problem with these modern day churches. They're trying to follow God in their flesh. And most of them just ain't doing, they just a terrible job and they can't do it. They fail in God and then they covering it up. And then some of them are just teaching, we can't do nothing for God. So you got these liberal churches that are just saying, God loves you no matter what you're doing. Cause they just gave up. And then you got the legalistic old school church that says, just keep doing stuff. And they give up, they give you a bunch of men's commands, you know, stuff that really ain't even in the Bible, traditions of men. So, it's crazy and people just fell and they fell. And then there's legitimate saints who've been born again. They haven't been taught how to walk in the spirit. And they just fail in God. And they say, I don't know how to do this. Nobody taught you how to, how to walk in the spirit. So let's talk about how to walk in the spirit. Let's talk about some of the evidence and um, how it works. Let me just say this before I read this passage. Here's how you walk in the spirit. And I've been saying this over and over again. You just take one sin right now. Something you're struggling with. That you want to overcome. All you got to do is say, Lord, I can't do this in my flesh. I, I, I mean, I'm weak. I'm a messed up individual, but I want to please you. Your law is good. I don't want to tell lies no more. Just say that to God. I can't do this in my own power. I need your power to do it. Can you empower me to do this? Of course he can and he will. And at that moment, if you believe that you cannot, you don't have to tell lies no more and that the Holy Spirit is power you, you won't tell lies no more. Simple as that. It's a submission on a daily basis to every area in your life. You're dealing with pornography. You're dealing with manipulation. You're dealing with laziness. Whatever the case may be, anything, you can give it to God and say, I'm weak. I need your power to do this. I'm not strong. You're strong. The Bible says, let the weak say they're strong. Why? Because they got the Lord. So I, I, I'm a weak man. I say I'm weak every day. And you want to call me weak? Yeah, I'm weak. But in Christ, I'm strong. See, I'm connected to God, so I'm strong. You see me excelling in my faith. You see me walking in righteousness. You, you're like, how is he doing that? I'm doing it because I'm leaning on the Holy Ghost. I'm empowered by the Holy Ghost. I wake up every day and say, I can't do this, but you can, God. Empower me to do this. And you'll find in your life that you're doing the will of God. You are, you're not practicing sin. Now, every now and then, yeah, if you in your flesh, you fall into your flesh or you get comfortable thinking, man, I've been winning so long and you stop connecting to the Holy Spirit for power, you end up in, in your sin. That's how it works all the time. So you have every day, even if you're doing good, if you've been, you've been on a good track for a whole month and you've been living right for God and everything been flowing, you've been, been pleasing God. Just keep doing that. Every day you wake up, don't think it's you because it's not you. Soon as you start thinking it's you, I got this. I don't really need to pray about this no more. That's when you end up failing. So that's the best way I can tell you how to do it. That's it works for me. I've overcome multiple sins by, like that. Unforgiveness. Just give it to God and you'll see things change. You got an eating issue. You got a gluttony problem. You got whatever it is, you can overcome it. 
That's why I ain't got no excuse for folk today. I don't give these pastors no slack. They supposed to know better. You don't got the Holy Ghost? You ain't, you ain't born again? You're not walking in the spirit? But something ain't right. Now these guys are not born again. They don't have the spirit to begin with. They don't even have a power source to begin with. And then there are people who are born again. They have the power source, but they ain't turned it on. Because they haven't been taught how to turn it on. The Holy Ghost is there for them to empower them to overcome all the sins. He wants you to please God. He wants to empower you and strengthen you. All you got to do is submit and surrender yourself to him and say, I don't have this. You got it, God. All you got to do is commit your will to saying, I don't want to do this. I want to please God in this area. If God's saying, don't lie and tell the truth, you say, I'm committing to telling the truth, God, but I need your power to do it. And I'm going to believe that you got me empowered and strengthened and I'm going to walk in your ways and be pleasing to you. And you'll see that you are pleasing to God. You'll just keep winning. You'll just keep winning. The devil don't, they don't want you to know this. These, these mainstream teachers don't teach you this. They don't teach you how to walk in the spirit. Let me read another passage it's in Galatians chapter five, verses 13 through 25. It says, for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. This is, I think it's the King James Version. Only use not liberty for an occasion to, to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So we're going back to love again. This is what the law is wrapped up in it. So if you want to be able to keep the law, just, just love folk. And love is outlined in 1 Corinthians 13. It's a fruit of the Spirit. If you get in the Spirit, you'll love, you'll please God, you'll keep the whole law. Just like that. You don't need to get out the Ten Commandments. You'll automatically be doing it. You won't be telling lies. You won't be disrespectful. You won't have to be told you're wrong and have to get corrected all the time because you're walking in the Spirit. Verse 15, but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed of one another. Verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. I walk in the spirit. I ain't under the law. Okay? But yet I'm doing that law automatically. See, for all y'all so-called commandment keepers, walk in the spirit. You'll please God. Don't try to follow them 10 commandments on your own. You're going to fail. Once again, the law is for a wicked person. Rules set up telling you don't do this, don't do that. That's for wicked people. I'm not a wicked man. I'm a righteous man because I have faith. The Bible says that righteousness was accounted to Abraham because he believed. I'm a believer in Christ. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a righteous man. I'm not no wicked man. Don't put no law up and tell me what the speed limit is. I know what the speed limit is. It's in my heart. I know to be kind to people. And you ain't got to tell me, you see. And that's why I can tell who I'm dealing with when I interact with so-called believers and, and so-called uh, Hebrews and stuff like that. They start acting funny. They start being disrespectful. I got to correct them all the time. Why I got to do that? Because they're not born again. Because they're not walking in the spirit. They should know better. But yet they don't know better. Why? Because the spirit has not written the commandments on their heart. Why are you so arrogant, pastor? Why are you disrespecting your character against pastor? Because he's not born again. You see? I'm led by the spirit. They not led by the spirit. That's why your pastor crazy. That's why some of y'all crazy. Walk in the spirit. Confess your sins and tell God, look, I ain't been following your, your it's the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. Just ask God to be, look, if you don't feel like you're born again, look, just ask God to be, to be filled with the spirit. Confess all your sins and say, look, I need you right now, Lord. He'll come in. If you legitimate, he got you. He want to save you. His wish that nobody perish, but all come into repentance. God ain't trying to damn nobody. He's trying to save everybody. He knows everybody ain't coming. The scriptures are real here, y'all. Everything will be posted so you can read them for yourself. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Okay, number 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, 
envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such likes of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. To that whole list of people, they, they keep doing that, they're going to hell. That's your flesh at work. That's why you need to walk in the spirit. So you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, as we just read earlier. Okay. This is what I see in churches today. All of this is what I see in these Hebrew camps today. That's why I ain't a part of them. Y'all ain't got the Holy Ghost. Y'all not walking in the spirit. Now, there's two different things that I'm saying is, but yeah, in some cases, people don't have the Holy Ghost. In some cases, they are born again, but they just don't know how to walk in the spirit. They they got little sins in their life they keep falling into. And they don't seem to know how to get out of it. And they're always sad because they, they, they want to please God, but they, they don't. And that's because they're not walking in the spirit. But then there are other people who claim to be a follower of God. Their attitude towards sin is a lot different. They'll hide it. They'll condemn others. And when they're confronted with their sin, they'll make it out to be, they'll make a mountain out to be a molehill. They'll say, can't nobody follow God like that. You know, they just don't care. How it, how it affects people or how it offends God. That's an indication that they're not even children of God because real saints are, are contrite about sin. It bothers them greatly. They don't want to do it. They ain't trying to practice it, but they may be ignorant as to how to overcome it. And that's because they don't, they, they have not been taught how to walk in the spirit. All right, let me continue on. But anybody who, you know, practices these things, they end up in hell, basically. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So I practice those and I ain't under no law. Ain't no law against that. You can do that every day, all the time. Ain't no law against that. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So living in the spirit is being born again. So he's saying if you're born again, walk in the spirit. So there is a way where you can be born again, but not walking in the spirit. And that's what he's saying. Walk in the spirit. OK, yield your members to God and say, I need your power to overcome. I need your power to follow you. OK, now let's back up a little bit. He says here. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. So crucifixion is to, to kill. So basically every day when you feel some kind of way about doing sin, you crucify that. You say, I'm not doing that. And then you walk to the spirit and say, Holy Spirit, empower me to do the right thing. So you say no to the wrong thing. And then you say, Holy Spirit, empower me to do the right thing. Oftentimes people try to suppress their fleshy desires in their own willpower. And it works for a little bit, but if eventually it just, it just explodes. OK. You can't restrict the body in the flesh. It's not going to work. OK, you need the Holy Spirit, Spirit's power to do that. People keep doing it. Why, why do they do it? Pride pride. I can, I can please God on my own. I don't want to feel like I'm a handicap and I need God. I don't want to feel like a little child where I need God's help. I don't want to feel, well, you are a child. As the Bible says, Jesus said, if you don't become like a little child, you can't inherit the kingdom of God. What did a little child do? They are dependent on their parent for everything. You got to humble yourself in order to be saved. You got to come to God every day. I can't overcome drugs. I can't overcome fornication. I can't overcome adultery. I need your power, God. And when you come like that, that's when his power come. But get to your flesh again and start to see what happens. You're going to end up failing again. So that's how you overcome sin. OK, this is how you walk in the spirit. So the evidence, as we, we mentioned, of the spirit is love, joy, peace long suffering, gentleness, goodness, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you, you know, if you following God and you walking in, in the spirit and pleasing him by your life, you'll see. It. But if you see these other stuff going on, emulations, idolatry, witchcraft, which is manipulation, fornication, adultery, uncleanliness, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, all of that junk. And you say you saved and you say you a child of God and you born again. You need to get in the spirit. You need to confess your sins and repent and get in the spirit. God will wash you clean. He said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So all you got to do is confess your sins, 
He'll wash all that away and start walking in the spirit. That's all you got to do. You'll be fine from now. All right. So how does this apply to like the other laws? Is there stuff like uh, the dietary laws where well, you will follow the spirit in those? You know, many of them are still good today. Many of those laws are still good today. You can follow those. But be in the spirit. Don't just get the letter out and say, I'm going to follow God and somehow I'm going to please him. It's not going to work. One in particular is the fringes. You know, some Hebrew camps will get on you for not having no fringes, saying, well, here's what the Bible says. But look at look up what fringes were for. Fringes was was to help you remember to keep the commandments. That's found in Numbers chapter 15, verses 38 through 40. They help you to remember to keep the commandments. We have the Holy Spirit in our heart that helps us remember to keep the commandments. And we have a power source to, to do what God says. So we don't need no fringes. So you can get rid of wearing fringes. God ain't tripping if you got them on or not. It's a fashion statement at this point. I don't need no fringes on. You see, we in the new covenant with the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost govern your life. You'll see a lot of these laws are not necessary. Obviously, we don't sacrifice animals because Jesus's blood is sufficient. So when we commit a sin, we just ask Jesus for forgiveness. We confess that sin and repent. And he forgives us and he washes that sin away. So. There's another set of laws we don't have to practice. And so you'll see the 613 laws are getting smaller and smaller for you. But ultimately, we're not under none of that. Be walking in the spirit, we automatically please God. See, when you're a sinner, once again, and you're just this wicked individual, you have to be given hard laws. Don't do this, don't do this. And in order to keep a sane society, you have to have these laws because you're wicked. That's why we got laws today. If everybody born again, wouldn't be no laws. <laughs> Wouldn't be no laws because you all you you got the spirit of God in you moving you to do the right thing. There wouldn't need to be a speed limit in a residential area because the people of God would just automatically sort out. Oh, we in a residential area. It might be children playing in the front yard. They might run out in the street. They ball might run out in the street. They might try to go get it. Let me slow down in this area. Let me be cautious not to run over nobody in this area. That's normal for a child of God. But for the sinner, they ain't caring about nobody. There's a law that says don't litter. They catch you littering, they can, they can find you. But the, the man with the spirit of God says, I'm not going to destroy God's property like that. I'm not going to leave non-biodegradable crap around in, in, in the yard or throw stuff around on the street. So I ain't going to do that. I respect God's property. You see? But the sinner needs a law to be told don't litter. Here's a basket where you can put your, your trash in. They still won't do it. These laws are for sinners. And so you say you're a child of God, but you want to go back under the law. Don't go up under the law. You're just a sinner then at that point. And, and guess what? Those who try to keep the law will not succeed. They will fail and they will go to hell. That's, that's how it's going to work. Anybody trying to keep the law is going to go to hell. In your flesh, that's not the way God is, is doing it now. He's saying, walk in my spirit now. You see, the Bible says again, you know, nobody's justified by keeping the law. I'm going to read it again. Romans 3.20. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. So you want to see how ugly and wicked you are? Try to keep the law and see what happens. You're going to see to yourself you're a wicked individual. And that's what a lot of these, these uh, camps are doing, a lot of these so-called Christians are doing. They, they see themselves and they try to hide it. And then they point out other people's dirt. Uh-uh. Get, get from up under the law. There's a better way. That's walking in the spirit, okay? So that's all I got for you today. If you're a child of God, walk in the spirit. If you're not born again, confess your sins and ask for the Holy Spirit to empower you. Die to your old self and then repent of your sins. And he will he will come in and empower you and, and rebirth you. And now you're a child of God rather than a child of Satan. And then walk in the spirit. That's all. You'll win. You're going to win. God wants you to win. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. So you can win. But you got to say that I need him. If you don't do that, if you don't surrender and say that you're a weak person, you'll never overcome. And you'll, you'll lose and you'll walk around trying to hide your sins and all this kind of stuff. So that's all I got for you today. Until next time, be blessed.